Thank you, Roberta. I, I really enjoyed your talk and uh, I, I'm, I'm now much more clear about the framework because I read the article and um, certain things, I, um, I, I found them like much more clear now that, uh, that you have explained everything. And, and I find it a very, you know, comprehensive way to frame like how countries respond to um, you know, different global trends and, and, you know, like both in the global and domestic environment and then develop different technologies. Um, while we are waiting for some questions from the floor and, and the students, I'd like to start with, uh, with my own questions. Um, so the first one that popped into my mind uh, when I listened to the presentation is about technology. And I was wondering why did you pick like concentrated solar power, uh, power and, and how diffused is it uh, um, in countries nowadays? Uh, because it seems like it's quite um, emerging compar in comparison to, uh, to other types of technology that you talked about. Yeah, do you want me? To, yeah, yeah, should I answer immediately? Okay, I, I mean, the, the, the reason to uh, include the concentrated solar power is exactly uh, because uh, um, we, uh, I mean, something we wanted to have uh, is uh, um, different type of technology. So uh, the case of concentrated solar power and uh, in this uh, more recent uh, work uh, uh, we are doing, uh, uh, with, uh, with a wider geographical focus, also green hydrogen, uh, is, the intention is to include also uh, industries uh, which are not so stable and so to understand, uh, and, 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 and this is something which is clearly coming out from what we are uh, uh, finding in the evidence, uh, is that uh, the type of uh, strategies uh, um, you need to uh, undertake uh, uh, for uh, um, uh, uh, building up uh, technological capacity in stable technologies uh, is very different from what you need to do in uh, unstable technologies. So it is true that uh, CSP uh, still is, uh, a, um, uh, is uh, a limited market, as a limited market, uh, but uh, um, uh, I mean, I, I think it's interesting from this point of view because uh, it's a very rapidly evolving technologies, uh, technology. And uh, um, for instance, uh, I mean, it's, uh, maybe it's interesting uh, uh, to, um, to give you some details uh, about uh, the reason why this, industry, this uh, technology is interesting. For instance, in the case of Morocco, it was selected uh, as preferred uh, to wind and solar uh, because uh, um, CSP, uh, is allowing uh, to store uh, um, the energy. And so it means uh, that uh, the energy could be uh, used also uh, during the night. So for Morocco, this was the reason why to choose uh, uh, CSP. So, uh, I mean, a a every of these technology has its peculiarity, as in very interesting uh, to, to, to have this uh, technological uh, uh, variety in order to understand uh, uh, also from the political, uh, from the policy point of view, uh, what needs to be done. Thank you. And also, like in terms of the countries that you choose for the um, for the follow up study, like I noted some of them, so they are a bit um, everywhere in the world. So they come like from Africa, but also Latin America. I remember Chile. Um, also from Southeast Asia, there is Vietnam and, and Thailand. So what was the rationale for, uh, for choosing these countries? So I, I, they have not been chosen in the sense that this uh, work we are doing is based on empirical evidence existing in the literature. So what we have done is to undertake a, a very, um, a very, uh, intense and, and deep uh, uh, review in the literature. And so these are the, 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 the countries of which uh, we have found empirical evidence. So, um, I mean, this is what we have done so far. And now what we are, uh, uh, what we are also thinking to do in, in, in the future is maybe to try to concentrate uh, on uh, uh, some leading countries uh, 
in, in the different technologies. What is uh, interesting uh, uh, to, uh, to tell uh, um, you maybe here is that uh, looking at the, um, uh, some statistics about uh, the top uh, uh, producing countries uh, in the different technologies in the world, uh, the number of uh, um, latecomer countries uh, uh, from uh, uh, 2005 uh, uh, to uh, 2020, um, uh, the number of, of latecomer countries entering in the top 10 has increased quite a lot uh, in all uh, these energies. So um, another way to proceed uh, could be to focus on uh, these uh, uh, leading uh, latecomer countries. But as I said, what we have done so far is uh, basically rely on the existing empirical evidence. And so this list, sorry, as a follow-up of these latecomer countries, if is from UNCTAD, from a report. What list? Sorry. The list of latecomer um, countries, like that, have caught up on uh, certain technologies. Uh, uh, I mean, yes, as I was saying, uh, these are, uh, uh, this is a study uh, which is based on uh, empirical evidence available in the literature. So, okay. I mean, basically we are, uh, we have, we, we wanted to try to validate our framework uh, beyond China. And what we have done was to go into the literature and find uh, empirical evidence uh, on a number of industries. Um, and, uh, and the countries are the countries uh, uh, on which we could find uh, evidence. Um, so it's not, it's not a deliberate uh, selection, it's more driven uh, by um, empirical evidence uh, availability. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Um, so one of, okay, let's first take a question from the floor. Uh, from, right. Uh, Janssen Fan, um, which asks, which one is the most important thing you would say to be considered for policymakers? I guess um, the meaning is for taking advantage of these green windows of opportunity. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, as I as I uh, as I concluded, um, I, probably the most uh, important and most difficult uh, um, in uh, suggestion for policymaker is uh, uh, this need of uh, uh, of uh, um, addressing uh, in a coordinated uh, way. Um, uh, um, areas which are usually uh, uh, considered in silos, quite separate. So usually uh, you have uh, an environmental policy, uh, policy which is not uh, uh, really uh, followed by uh, industrial innovation policy. And this is something that uh, is, is quite clear uh, uh, how it's working, uh, um, uh, at least uh, 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 reading uh, from the outside. Uh, uh, is working has been working quite well uh, in the case of China, and uh, uh, it's not easy to find outside China. So this coordination of different areas. So, for instance, there are a lot of cases uh, um, in which, uh, uh, I mean, for instance, uh, the, the, in terms of uh, um, uh, national law for creating domestic market. Uh, uh, through uh, national auction of uh, feed-in uh, tariff, uh, there are there is plenty of example all around the world. Um, <clears throat> one uh, uh, close example to China is, for instance, uh, Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam, as uh, in the last few years, has become uh, one of the uh, most dynamic uh, uh, domestic market for. Uh, uh, solar PV, uh, but uh, as far as uh, um, it could be understood from the empirical evidence available, most of this uh, technology is imported from abroad. So it means uh, that uh, uh, Vietnam is really um, uh, 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 building up a lot of uh, 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 energy capacity in solar, uh, but there has not been uh, 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 a lot of uh, uh, active uh, uh, policies uh, in order to create uh, some domestic uh, production and, uh, and above all uh, innovation capacity. So um, this is very important. So this coordination of different policy uh, domains uh, is really uh, key. Um, and then 
uh, in uh, uh, this study we are doing uh, for uh, uh, ANCAD, of course, uh, the policy, um, the policy uh, recommendations are very, very uh, wide and uh, detailed and uh, they, um, uh, for instance, we are articulating a number of uh, uh, a, a quite, um, uh, a quite uh, um, the de de detail uh, uh, policy roadmap uh, in order to um, uh, for the country in order to to be um, a to be able to open uh, green windows of opportunity so what needs to be done in order to open uh, green windows of opportunity and what need to be done in order to assess uh, and uh, uh, sustain uh, uh, the uh, development of the sectoral system. And, uh, uh, and here you can think about, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, for instance, the need uh, to invest in domestic R&D. We have seen uh, China has done uh, this, or the need to invest in, uh, speci in specialized uh, uh, human capital. For instance, uh, a, an important, uh, uh, program uh, which China has uh, undertaken, uh, um, which has been key in terms of uh, the development of the solar uh, industry in the first, uh, in the initial stages, has been uh, this uh, program uh, to um, incentivate uh, uh, the uh, coming back uh, of uh, uh, Chinese uh, um, uh, researchers and entrepreneurs uh, um, living abroad. Um, so. Um, the, uh, another important point uh, which we can see is playing, uh, for instance, a key role uh, in countries uh, in Africa is the involvement uh, in international collaboration project. Um, this is, for instance, uh, um, something which is uh, um, playing a key role uh, in the develop in the recent, uh, very recent development of the green hydrogen. Uh, uh, in green hydrogen, in which many uh, European countries, in particularly Germany, is investing a lot, and and Germany is part and is um, is uh, 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 establishing a lot of uh, partner um, uh, in Africa. Uh, so uh, is involved uh, in project uh, in Morocco and in uh, uh, Namibia, for instance, Germany in Namibia. Um, is uh, uh, building up uh, uh, technological capacity um, in collaboration with uh, some key actors in the countries and also creating, uh, um, a, is creating for instance, uh, a grant uh, uh, program uh, to, um, to, uh, to take uh, uh, Namibian uh, researchers uh, uh, to uh, study and do research uh, in Germany on uh, green hydrogen. So, I mean, there are many different uh, instruments uh, uh, which can be used. And I think, uh, uh, I mean, a, a, a detailed analysis of what China has done uh, in many of these industry is very useful uh, uh, and is a very useful uh, um, uh, is an example for for many other latecomer countries. Although, of course, of course, uh, uh, China has some uh, uh, specificity uh, which are unique, and uh, uh, so uh, the other countries cannot really think about uh, adopting uh, what China has done. Uh, um, uh, as such, uh, but many in instruments uh, can really uh, be uh, adopted in other countries. Thank you for this answer. Actually, you also um, kind of answered uh, some of my students' questions. Like, for instance, Kunyi was asking, uh, how could countries in, in less developed areas like Africa, Latin America balance the problem of uh, domestic uh, need of energy and the transition towards sustainability? Like you mentioned, international corporations is uh, one way. Uh, and, and also like to uh, merge, them, merge it with the other question is um, um, also uh, from my student Jun Lin is, um, when you know when China helps and this kind of uh, bridges uh, this 
talk to the topic of of Chinese investments in the world and and how like um, I think last year China became for the first time like it exported and invested more in renewable energy than in fossil fuels and so this marks mm-hmm. a major change um, also for you know for every every scholar I think interested in in looking at uh, you know how China invests and and what China does in terms of like um, uh, you know policy to help uh, other countries so my student asks whether um you know like china can also export policy instruction or does it export policy policies um suggestions right like so policy learning lessons in addition to financial and, and technical support um so maybe you can share an example if you if you can think of one um well um I mean, I, I don't think it's really, uh, we can really uh, say that China, uh, I'm, um, of, of course, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in any of these uh, international collaboration and China, uh, for instance, is uh, involved in a number of uh, uh, international projects um, uh, in, in, in many of these industry, for instance, uh, um, the role of China uh, is key uh, in terms of the diffusion of these uh, um, of these industries uh, of solar and wind industry in uh, uh, Africa. So, um, uh, and um, I mean, I think that in many of these cases, uh, uh, China is exporting uh, uh, technologies, uh, but on the other side, is also um, uh, is also. Um, uh, somehow exporting uh, some of the uh, measures, uh, um, uh, some of the measures uh, uh, which have been uh, uh, adopted uh, um, uh, in some of these industry in in the Chinese case. <clears throat> At the same time, uh, uh, we need to remember that uh, uh, policy need to be uh, context uh, based. So. Um, I mean, it's very difficult to something which has been uh, uh, maybe working in China, uh, not necessarily uh, could work uh, in the same way um, in a country where, for instance, uh, uh, there are not uh, the same kind of uh, uh, the same kind of preconditions. Um, so, for instance, just to make uh, a, an example, uh, uh, South Africa. Um, South Africa has, uh, um, uh, has uh, um, adopted as a measure for creating a national market, uh, both for solar and wind, uh, the uh, national auction, uh, but uh, it has also attached to this national auction uh, the requirement of some uh, local content, um, but at the same time, uh, China didn't have uh, the domestic production capacity, an existing domestic production capacity. So the result of this uh, local content was that uh, um, uh, some of the international uh, international um, companies uh, went to uh, South Africa and basically started to assemble. Uh, uh, components uh, in uh, South Africa because uh, there was this uh, requirement in terms of local content, uh, but this no- was not really uh, driving uh, the development of domestic production capacity. So in this case, for instance, there were not the preconditions for adoption of such a kind of, um, uh, of, of something that in the case of China instead was very successful because China had the precondition in terms of uh, uh, domestic production capacity. So uh, it's, it's role always important to, um, to um, uh, remember that uh, the um, that policy need to be context based and not even uh, national based, but uh, very often uh, is the local context which make uh, uh, the difference. Um, so I think that this is very important to remember. Thank you. So as we are about time, I think there was one more question of the differences between mainland China and Hong Kong. Um, right. I don't know if you're taking Hong Kong in consideration in, in your study or if you have like a, 
come across uh, the the example of Hong Kong, but it's it, it is a bit of uh, you know a very different context of, of policy and uh, and and this is yeah. right. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I should admit that uh, I don't uh, uh, have uh, any uh, specific uh, information about uh, um, what is happening uh, in Hong Kong uh, uh, in in this industry. I don't know. Maybe you know much better than me if any of this industry is important uh, um, uh, for. Uh, um, uh, Hong Kong. Um, I, what I could say is that we have been, we have not so much focus on uh, um, of the difference uh, also within China. Um, but uh, I think this is also, uh, for instance, in terms of policy, uh, this is something that could be interesting to investigate because, uh, of course, uh, in China, in many of these uh, industries, uh, there were some uh, key national programs, but then uh, there were a lot of local programs. And uh, so uh, I, I know that uh, in many of these industries, uh, uh, also um, uh, uh, the implementation and the development of this industry is very different uh, within China, uh, as, as we can expect. So um, it, it is something, this is something that we have not uh, investigated so far, but could be uh, quite interesting also to get uh, um, more uh, into, the, um, uh, in, into the differences uh, within China and maybe within uh, uh, between China and Hong Kong and, uh, and, and maybe uh, um, uh, also doing a comparative study of uh, uh, within a national context, uh, which is the, the one that we know um, how the different local policies uh, have been uh, interacting with the national context and maybe uh, having a different effect uh, in terms of the uh, capacity uh, to take advantage of these uh, windows of opportunity more uh, at a local level. So yeah, I actually think that, that could be... be a very interesting follow-up study so maybe that's, that's uh, i would I, uh, yes i would i would uh, i would think so and um for instance uh, there is uh, and this is quite interesting uh, we have not uh, uh, exploited so far but uh, irena which is the agency for um, international agency for renewable energies has a very um, a very good uh, a database of all uh, the policies uh, implemented uh, by the different countries uh, uh, um, concerning uh, renewable energies. And, and one day I was looking at this, this database and I've seen that, for instance, for China, uh, there are also, I don't know if all, but uh, at, at least uh, definitely there are uh, also included in this database uh, the local uh, um, uh, policies at provincial uh, level. So this could be uh, so it, probably there is the possibility to compare uh, how the different provinces have uh, um, implemented uh, the national policies and maybe how different uh, instruments uh, have been uh, working uh, in one province uh, with respect to the other. And uh, I think that this could be uh, definitely something uh, very uh, interesting to um, uh, to to undertake, uh, uh, I mean, as a, as a follow up study. Thank you. So as a last question, I wanted to uh, to ask something about um, the global framework, right? Like, so you, you wrote this article in 2020, so you could not predict uh, the, the COVID-19 pandemic, obviously. But mm -hmm. during these pandemic years, there was a lot of talk, uh, especially I heard of this over and over again in, in the World Economic Forum about COVID-19 providing really a reset opportunity for this sustainability transition. Um, so how do you see this? Like, uh, uh, have you actually looked at this uh, time frame and at how like certain policies are also affected by things like pandemics, for instance, that, uh, that have really halted the, the emissions? So if you see global emissions, they went uh, pretty much like uh, down by a lot in, uh, in 2020 and then you know like they they spiked again uh last year um and probably like they will continue you know re resume as uh be same as before like also uh this year so how 
how are you feeling? Like, are you optimistic that, uh, um, you know, this window of, of opportunity provided by the pandemic has been uh, taken advantage of? Or are you, you know, you are also thinking of, um, also in the context of now the, the Russia-Ukraine war, uh, you know, how this other um, uh, event um, can have a counter effect. So really, in a sense, could also close the window of, of green opportunity if we cannot really catch up like fast enough, right? Like, so it's interesting to see how certain events like, um, have an effect, right? Like probably on on uh, on these policies at global level. Yeah. No, I think this is a very good question, and I think uh, it, it, it's really important uh, to address uh, this issue. Um, I mean, uh, I think um, uh, uh, of course it's a very complex uh, question to to address, but uh, um, what I could say is that. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, apart from uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the clear effect of uh, the impact of the pandemic on the global emission and then uh, the, the global emissions uh, going back uh, uh, again uh, um, uh, due to the economic growth uh, uh, starting again and then now the, the conflict uh, in, uh, uh, in Ukraine. Um, uh, uh, well, if we look at uh, from the uh, policy point of view, uh, one of the um, one of the um, result of the pandemic has been uh, uh, the European uh, uh, Green Deal. Uh, but then I was just uh, uh, reading uh, uh, um, a, an article uh, uh, from the Economist. Uh, uh, in which uh, um, basically um, uh, um, the article was saying that uh, uh, there are some uh, um, uh, estimates that uh, uh, basically only 6% of all of the, the big, uh, um, uh, the big uh, uh, program uh, for reconstruction, which was uh, uh, promoted by uh, European Union, so about $14 uh, trillion, dollars, only 6% really went uh, on programs uh, likely to cut emissions. So a lot of uh, discussion, a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, emphasis on green, uh, new green, uh, this green uh, new deal, but in fact only 6%. And apparently um, in the case of the US, uh, the, the, the plan was about six trillion dollars, and nothing basically went on uh, on, some, on uh, climate friendly uh, technologies. But at the same time, um, there are a number of signals uh, which I think uh, are quite uh, uh, important. Um, for instance, uh, in in the case of the US, um, it we look at the um, investment uh, uh, from venture capital uh, and private equity. Uh, this has been uh, really going a lot into clean tech. So uh, I was reading again in the, the Economist about 80, almost 90 billion dollars of investment from venture capital went uh, into clean tech. And something also quite important is that. Uh, um, the U.S. has uh, recently um, uh, in, is, is, has recently started to invest in uh, um, the department uh, in innovation in the Department of Energy. This was something. Uh, I mean, the Department of Energy in the U.S. was mainly devoted to innovation to to invest in innovation in nuclear energy, and now they have opened up a huge um, uh, research program on renewable uh, energies and one of the um, one of the uh, industries in we, on which they are uh, 
uh, investing a lot of uh, um, uh, a lot of money in terms of research is green hydrogen with the objective uh, to reduce uh, in a decade uh, the producing cost by 80 percent uh, Europe uh, the same is also investing a lot uh, in uh, green hydrogen and for instance uh, it's quite interesting uh, 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 um, uh, uh, um, something which was said uh, uh, just a few days ago, ago by Olaf uh, uh, Scholz, uh, the German uh, uh, chancellor, um, which due to the, um, the, the war in Ukraine has announced uh, the intention to open uh, two new import terminals for liquefied natural gas, but at the same time, he has also uh, said that uh, uh, these, uh, in, uh, these terminals uh, are now, in the short term, going to be used for liquefied natural gas because there is a, a problem to solve in the short term. But these uh, are being uh, uh, built uh, so that they can be converted in the medium term to green hydrogen. And uh, uh, Germany, for instance, is uh, basically behind uh, um, uh, many of the countries uh, in Africa which are now investing uh, in the development of green hydrogen. So um, I think that, uh, I mean, there are a lot of signals that uh, uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, public money are going to be put uh, in innovation, to be invested in innovation uh, in relation to renewable energies, because uh, um, I think that, uh, for instance, what is happening uh, uh, in these days in Ukraine is showing uh, that uh, we, uh, I mean, it, probably this is not going to be the short term uh, uh, answer to uh, the conflict, but definitely um, we is going to be the medium short, the medium term answer. So uh, the development of uh, technology, some uh, uh, such as green hydrogen, for instance, is uh, um, very promising. And from this point of view, I, I would be interested in. Uh, in knowing maybe uh, from you or from somebody in the audience uh, who maybe uh, could be knowledgeable about uh, um, uh, what China, uh, I mean, what do what you think uh, is going to be the impact uh, of this conflict uh, on China from the point of view of renewable uh, energies? Because, for instance, uh, uh, and, and this is quite strange, uh, if we consider green hydrogen, on which uh, US is investing a lot, Europe is investing a lot, this is one technology on which China is still uh, quite lagging behind. Um, it doesn't seem uh, it, it, it is, um, uh, China is really uh, investing a lot of, on this technology, which is, seems to be very promising. So uh, I wonder uh, if you have uh, any specific insight on that or uh, somebody could uh, maybe um, give us some uh, insight about uh, uh, what really uh, is going to be the impact on China in terms of renewable technology of this conflict in uh, Ukraine. I think about green hydro, I think there is a, a focus on also on China, uh, like inside China, there is a, um, I remember seeing like a video of, um, I think it was the CEO of a large uh, uh, car manufacturer company in China, uh, saying how like they are really, really looking at hydrogen as the next level, the next step of their development. And I remember just also from some of my students pointing out like that we have been looking at the uh, Beijing Olympics, uh, the Winter Olympics and like, you know, showcasing some of the first uh, hydrogen technology there, uh, green hydrogen, I think it was. So mm -hmm. it's, um, it's starting, it's starting, but probably I'm not, I haven't really looked at the data, so I cannot say in comparison with the US or um, even Japan, I think, like because uh, um, I think, I'm not sure, but I think Japan is also like leading um, this new, um, you know, revolution of, uh, of hydrogen uh, or Europe as well. And yeah, when it comes to uh, looking at the Russia-Ukraine uh, conflict, I think the impacts of China are just like uh, sort of looking at freezing a bit the the situation of uh, of flows right like of 
trade flows and, and investment flows. So, sure. Yeah, I think yeah. still we are ending on a positive note with a, a lot of uh, you know investments in in new uh, new technologies that will probably hopefully lead us to to a greener future. Um, so I wanted to thank you for your time and for a very interesting presentation. And we hope to host you in person at some point in, uh, in Hong Kong. And um, yeah, thank you all for the audience. Uh, for my students, we are logging in. Uh, let's take 10 minutes break and then we can log in into our Canvas. All right, let's join again in thanking um, Professor Rabellotti for a great talk. Uh, thank you so much and see you next time. Hopefully. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice afternoon. Thank you.